Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. A special welcome to the guests who are worshiping with us today. Everyone take a few moments and greet those around you and introduce yourself if you see a new face. This weekend, our theme for worship focuses on how God is present and active in our lives, sometimes when we don't think so. Our opening hymn is number 805, Eternal Father, Strong to Save.
Lord. Your order for worship is the service setting one, beginning on page 154. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, Gracious Father, I am sinful by nature, and am sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, Give you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you want done. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19. Today's sermon will be based in part on all three lessons, but mostly on the first reading. There Elijah went into a cave and spent the night, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aaron. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shephat, from Abel Mamola to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escaped the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escaped the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn to the front of the hymnal to Psalm 73. God is the strength of my heart.
The second reading is from the 8th chapter of Romans. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Please rise. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come out to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, number 847, Be Still My Soul.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear brothers and sisters in him. Elijah had a problem. But his biggest problem was not the problem he fought he had. We know what Elijah thought his biggest problem was. Verse 10, he recites word for word twice. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty, and the Israelites have abandoned your covenant. They've torn down your altars, they've put your prophets to death with the sword, and now I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me too. Because he recites this word for word twice, that tells me these are the thoughts that are spinning around in Elijah's mind, even when the words are not on his lips. And as problematic as all of those things were, they weren't Elijah's main problem. To understand Elijah's main problem, we need to look at this account in its context, in what comes before and what comes later. We're going to back up over three years to when Elijah was doing his job. And he went in to see King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. They were the royal couple that led the northern tribes in the worship of the false god Baal. Baal was supposed to be the sky father god who was in charge of the rain. So Elijah went in and said, Acknowledge the Lord as the true God in Israel. And if you do not, there will be no dew or rain except at my word. And then Elijah went out to the desert where there was a stream. And we heard about this last week that the ravens brought him bread and meat. And then when that stream dried up, Elijah went beyond Israel's northern border and stayed with a widow in Zarephath. And there, the widow's flower bucket and oil jar did not run out. And then when the three years were up, Elijah went back to Ahab and said, If the Lord is God, worship him. If Baal is God, worship him. Bring all the prophets of Baal to Mount Carmel, and we will both prepare offerings, but not set the fire. And then we will call out to our gods, and whichever one sends fire from heaven is the true God of Israel. So they went to Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal prepared their altar. They put the wood on it. They put their animal on it, and they cried out. They prayed. They screamed. They danced. They cut themselves, and during all of that, Elijah is mocking them. Maybe Baal has gone on a journey. Maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he's in deep thought. Maybe he hasn't set up his voicemail yet. They didn't have that 2,700 years ago, but you get the idea. He made fun of them because they all must answer. And then when they were worn out, Elijah repaired a broken altar, put the wood on it, put the animal on it, and got one of the rarest commodities of that day, water. 
and he soaked his offering and soaked the wood and even filled the ditch around the altar with water. You see what, I, what Elijah was doing. He was saying, I'm so confident that God can set fire to this that I'm going to make it harder for him. I'm going to soak my offering with water. And then he came forward and prayed a very short prayer, very calm prayer. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are the God in Israel. And then, boom, fire came down from heaven and instantly burned up the offering in the wood and evaporated the water. And the people shouted, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And Elijah defeated all of the prophets of Baal, killed all of the prophets of Baal. And then Ahab and Jezebel continued their threats on Elijah. We want to make your life like one of our prophets of Baal, what you did to them. So Elijah heads south to Mount Horeb, not a town by Madison, but the original Mount Horeb where God once gave his people his covenant and law, also known as Mount Sinai. And there Elijah complained, I've been zealous for the Lord Almighty, the Israelites have abandoned your covenant and broken down your altars, and they've put all of your prophets to death with the sword, and now they're trying to kill me too. What had Elijah just seen? What had Elijah just experienced? In the life and ministry of Elijah, we see things that hadn't been seen since the time of Moses. You remember Moses went in before the king of Egypt and said, let my people go. And when the king refused, was one plague after another, ten plagues. With the same boldness, Elijah goes before Ahab and Jezebel and says, Acknowledge that the Lord is God, and when they don't, Elijah has one plague that lasts three years, that terrible drought. God fed the Israelites with manna in the desert and with water from the rock, God sustained Elijah with food brought by ravens, with water from a brook, with a widow's flower bucket and oil jar that didn't run out. At the time of Moses, God showed his presence with a pillar of fire shined at night, a pillar of cloud by day, assured the Israelites they weren't alone. And for Elijah, there was fire from heaven. What more could Elijah want? God showed his power and might. He showed that he was working with Elijah and for Elijah. And then we think of what happened after. Elijah anointed Elisha to be the next prophet. And then as Elijah and Elisha are going to the place where Elijah's going to catch his bride in the fiery chariot to heaven. They go to one village, and what happens? Out comes the company of the sons of the prophets. 
We think this must have been something like a seminary, men who were being trained to share the word of God. And then they go to another village and another company of the sons of the prophets come out to meet him. And then they're about to cross the Jordan. And another one of these companies of the sons of the prophets comes out to meet Elijah because he's their hero. They've heard about what he was doing and how he was carrying out the Lord's work. This last time we're told this group of the sons of the prophets speared by the Jordan was a group of 50. Think again of Elijah's complaint. They put all your prophets to death with the sword and I am the only one left. Was Elijah really the only one left? And before God had told him, I have 7,000 in Israel who have not bowed the knee to Baal. No, in all of those things, God was with Elijah, working through him, working for him. Elijah's bigger problem was he was thinking of his role in the Lord's work. And it seems he was thinking only of his role in the Lord's work and what he was doing and how he didn't see the success that he wanted to. And God understood. And God gave Elijah the great privilege of going to heaven without dying. But he understood, well, it's time for someone else. Let's get Elijah. In the same way, Peter had a big problem, and it wasn't the problem that Peter thought he had. Jesus had just fed this crowd of over 5,000. Jesus went up into the hills to be alone. He sent his disciples over the lake in their boat. And early in the morning, he saw they are struggling against the storm. So he walked out to them on the lake. And it's pretty certain what was on Peter's mind when he saw Jesus. Oh, that is so cool, walking on the water. I got to try that too. So he says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come up to you on the water. And Jesus said, come, and Peter took a few steps out, and he saw the wind and felt the water, waves of water going over his feet, and was probably thinking, what am I doing? I can't do this. And he sang, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out and pulled him back up. And that tells us how far away Jesus was. Within arm's length. Jesus was two to three feet away. And Peter panicked. No, his main problem was not the wind and the waves. Jesus tells us what Peter's main problem was. You of little faith, why did you doubt? St. Paul knew the problems that the Roman Christians were about to go through. And so they don't panic or get disgusted at the condition of the world. St. Paul writes some things to prevent that kind of despair. 
words that you and I know very well. All things work together for good to those who love God. God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? If God is for us, who can be against us? In all these things, in trouble and hardship, nakedness, danger and sword, we are more than conquerors in him who loved us. About six years after Paul wrote to the Romans was when the Emperor Nero, even secular historians say Nero was the worst of all the Roman emperors. Nero began his persecution of the Christians, putting many to death. They were about to lose everything. But what did Paul tell them? Nothing can separate us from the love of God who is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord. Even when things would be at the worst, God will be there, working in them, working for them, working through them. Even in the worst, even with the loss of their lives, God was there with them, working all things in accordance with his good purpose. Nothing would separate them from his love. We also have those times when we think everything is a loss and that thought keeps spinning around in our minds. It could be we watch the TV news and we see the things going on in the world and we think everything is a loss. Or maybe it is a more personal crisis. A health crisis, a family crisis, a money crisis. We think everything is a loss. Jesus' parting words to his disciples were, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus is right there with his word. As close to you as your own Bible. He is there to hear your cry. As close to you as a prayer. And he gives you that promise that he has already taken care of the worst problem of all. Your sins that would separate you from him, but he took them on himself, so that can't separate you from his love. And neither can the crosses and trials and troubles of this life. He is still with you and for you. The writer of Psalm 73 was disgusted by the things that he saw in his world at his time. My, my feet almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And then I came to the house of God and then I understood. The wicked had their prosperity for this life and this life only. Yet I am always with you. <coughs> Hold me by my right hand. Guide me with your counsel. Afterward, you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Please rise and we continue with the Nicene Creed on page 162.
We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, who again all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified in a conscious fight. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayer of the church. prayer of the church is on page 5 of the worship folder. In our special prayers, we give thanks with Alan and Shirley Coles, Harry and Joyce Thompson, and Les and Jennifer Huffman on the occasion of their wedding anniversaries. We also give thanks with Carol Vesky on her 80th birthday. Let us pray. Lord, you are our rock in whom we take refuge. Support us in all our trials. Increase our faith when we face our doubts. Empower us with your wisdom and strength. Your saving help is our shield. Your right hand sustains us. Just as Peter sank when he doubted, we fail when we do not rely on you. Reach out to us, catch us, and uplift us that we may walk closely with you again. Your saving help is our shield. Strengthen those with weak faith by refreshing your promises in their hearts. Enlighten and call those with no faith by revealing your saving love. Strengthen our trust in your promises, your power, and your will to save. Your saving help is our shield. Your right hand sustains us. We pray for those who have served in the defense of our country and now bear wounds of body and mind. Give them help healing and patience. Your saving help is our shield. Your right hand sustains us. Lord, you are merciful and just, and you will have your victory over your enemies, who oppose your gospel and oppress your people. Have mercy on your enemies. As long as they live, give them opportunity to hear, believe, and turn to you before they face your just judgment. Your saving help is our shield. Your right hand sustains us. Look on your people who face trials of many kinds. Give them perseverance when their faith is tested. Give them wisdom and patience that comes from relying on you. Your saving help is our shield. Your right hand sustains us. Loving Father, we love because you first loved us. We praise and thank you for your love. For Alan and Shirley Coles for 46 years, Harry and Joyce Thompson for 52 years, and Les and Jennifer Huffman for 25 years of their marriage. With every joy and sorrow they share, bring them closer to each other and to you, their God and Lord. Lord Jesus, you promised your disciples that you would be with them always to the very end of the age. We thank you for being with Carol Besky for the 80 years of her life 
and for guiding her with your word of truth and blessing and keeping her in your love. Continue your blessing on her in the days and years to come. Listen, Lord, to the thoughts and cares of our hearts. Gracious God and Father, help all Christians today who are in need, strengthen our weak faith, give us all we need for body and soul, so that we all live in Christ and through Christ, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise and we continue with the sacrament on page 165. The Lord be with Send us your spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith, so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Forgive us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus 
Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you all. During the distribution, we continue with the singing of the next hymn, the stanzas as needed. All is now ready. Those who are in faith and fellowship with us, please come in the direction of the ocean.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Go in peace. Please rise for the thanks. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it we will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn. Chemistry 
on the high school level, so she can certainly teach science on the grade school level. And she has accepted our call, a part-time call for one year. And she answers, Dear St. Stephen's congregation, I am happy to share that after the prayer of the liberation of the Holy Spirit has led me to accept the call to teach upper grade science and eighth grade English. I pray that God blesses my efforts and uses my gifts to teach these students to his glory in Christ, Emily Elvis. So we look forward to having her on our teaching team this next year. God's blessings on your week.